Sarah, you could come on. Oh, hello. <laughs> Right, law of attraction and visualization and what you need to be aiming for when you start your business. Um, you have to have a reason for doing your business. You have to have something that is um, going to pull you forward, that's going to make you want to achieve your goals. Otherwise, you know, you're going to go in business. It's going to be like a hobby. It's not going to be a business for you to, you know, to reach your goals. You're going to sit back and go, oh, I'm not actually aiming for anything. I'm not actually sort of, you know, got anything in mind that I want to achieve. So... I just messed about with this for a little while because you haven't got that pull that is pulling you towards your, you know, your ultimate goal. Um, you need to have um, realistic goals, but also it's nice to have goals that are a little bit further, you know, out of your reach because, you know, you've always got something to strive towards. I know that Paul recently had a awesome goal board and he achieved all of his goals um, and he had to go and do a new one which is just the most incredible thing um, which is what everybody you know wants to do but so when you do make a goal board or have some ideas in mind that you want to achieve have some realistic ones and also have ones that are like I want to go to Necker Island or I want to you know I want to own a million pound house and things like that you know that doesn't seem so realistic at first but you've got to have these sorts of things around you as well so you've always aiming forwards in life um, and there's many ways that you can make your goals more visual for you. So goal boards is a brilliant thing. Cut, start to cut out scraps from magazines of pictures that you love, things that you want to buy, places you want to go, experiences you want to experience. Um, and have those in front of you all the time, you know, even your latest, you know, pin level in your business or the latest, um, you know, the new step up in your business. Do you want to get to a different level in your business? Have those in front of you and actually visualize that you've already done them as well. Uh, I know when I was in Jeunesse, um, I used to put the next pin level in front of me to say, congratulations, Sarah, you've just hit Sapphire pin level, even though I hadn't hit it yet, but I'd already congratulated myself on getting that pin level. And that seemed to really work. Um, so there's different levels of visualization. Um, you know, to really, really go for it, you have to believe that it's, you've already achieved it somehow. Um, I'm going to get Paul or Sam to talk to you more about that because they're more in kind of the mindset kind of stuff. But this is kind of just basics. You have to have goals, guys. You have to have something that you're striving for. Um, I think it's very, very important. Totally. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, I haven't actually yet got round to doing my vision board personally, but I have got all the bits, like you say, cut out things from magazines, got, you know, a few more bits to get. I've got the board to put it on and that's another thing for me to get done. But um, what I uh, tend to do is I tend to have a morning ritual. And, and the reason that I do this is because many of the leaders out there and coaches out there recommend it. Very successful people do it. So, you know, there must be something in it. And as well as all the reading I do and the videos I watch, every morning um, when I get back from the school run, I have a few minutes of meditation. So if you're not into meditation, then just a few minutes of quiet time to think. Um, and then I make sure that I read something that is positive and uplifting. And I also have some daily affirmations or affirming questions, I prefer to call them. And it was Robert Hollis that talked about the, you know, these affirming questions, not just saying, I am successful, I am wealthy. What makes it more powerful is to actually ask yourself a question like, what, um, what can I do today to help more people to become successful? How does it feel when I help more people to become successful? You know, what does that look like? What does that feel like? And you get that real feeling and that vision in your mind. And I find that really useful rather than just an affirmation, I am helping, I am successful. Um, I, I tend to, when I'm driving, um, I tend to listen to audio books when I'm driving. Some of the courses that I do, the personal development courses I do, in Life Mechanic University or listening to an audio book like The Science of Getting Rich. There's loads of free audio books out there that you can listen to. And just as you're driving along, it's amazing how you, know, you really are able to listen to it fully with very little distraction. I know, you know we've all been driving a long time, you're kind of on autopilot really, so you can listen to it um, without being distracted unless you've got a car full of kids, obviously. 
I find that doesn't really work. Um, but, um, you know, there's always an opportunity, even if you've got a busy life, you know, just driving between two places. Um, you know, I think a lot of us talk about how we hardly ever watch TV anymore. Um, I just record a few things that I really like and then watch them back when I've got, you know, a, a minute to do it because we're all too busy doing all these things that actually help us with our personal growth, our vision, our, you know, it resets that determination to keep going. If you do have um, a bad day or, or a, you hit a, a block or something like that, you know, just doing a kind of exercise that um, is described in any kind of coaching or personal development training, or just, you know, reading something really positive kind of resets everything for me. 100%. So I'm going to give you some weird science because what we're really talking about here is law of attraction. Okay. Um, the first thing that I'd say is, listen, how, how do you, who's got a sat nav? Have you two got sat navs? And if you're watching this. Only on my phone, but yeah. On your phone. So uh, yeah, actually we've all got a sat nav if you've got a smartphone. Okay. You, yeah, you, on the iPhone, iPhone map. Yeah. So let's suppose in, I want to go to Scotland. I'm in the southwest of England now, so Scotland's the other side of the country. So let's suppose I want to go to Scotland for whatever reason. I like deep fried Mars bars. I like <laughs> that sort of stuff. I like unhealthy food. Sorry if you're Scottish, I don't mean to be <laughs> stereotypical. But okay, so let's suppose I want to go to beautiful scenery, you know, fantastic places. First of all, unless I've got a specific place to go, how can I get there? I need to put something in the sat map. I can't just go Scotland. I need to put at least the center of a town or a city or a village, okay. So when I'm planning my trip to Scotland, I need to think about, okay, yeah, Scotland is successful, let's say. It's way over there, it's me being really successful. But if I just drive and I end up in Scotland, I could just be in a lay by, I could just be you know, in a, like the slums of Scotland and, you know, whatever. I could be in the worst part, okay? I need to find where I'm going to go, where I'm going to stay, where I'm going to live, you know. The more specific you can make you the address for your sat-nav, i.e. more specific your goals, I want to be rich is useless as an affirmation, guys, or something to attract, okay? Because what does rich mean? If you go and speak to a tribe, that's been hidden away for years in the rainforest and you bring them to the UK and you give them to somebody who's like on, you know, on the poverty line, they're like, wow, you've got a bed, you've got a house, you've got central heating, you've got a television. Oh, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> you know, you've got a car, you're a king, you live like a king. Rich is all relative. Okay, we all have different ideas of what rich is. So it needs to be, I'm planning to make a million dollars now, okay, in turnover. And that's a stepping stone to start making a million dollars in profit. I'm breaking mine into chunks, okay? I got here, like Sarah said, using vision board and everything. So the first thing is you sat nav, it needs to be specific. And then how do you keep it in front of you? How do you make sure that every day you go, you know where you're going, you know the direction you're going. And you sat nav straight, it's got a little map, okay? And it will tell you, you know, estimated time of arrival and how many miles to go. I have a vision board, okay? So that is in front of me. As you've just seen me grab it. That sits up here. I see it all the time. Do I focus on it 24 hours a day? Of course not. So it needs to lose weight. That should be on there as well. So you can see it's still red up. <laughs> you can see. You can see I keep that in front of me. And they're not, I don't necessarily want to go to that specific island on the board, okay? but that's what it represents to me that I want to go on nice holidays. But then I've got specifically Necker Island, you know, I've got um, paid in full, this house paid in full because I rent it at the minute, but we'd like to buy it. So it's on the board, you know, financial freedom, master of my own success. And you see, I'll put on there, I don't know if you saw changing lives. So this was something that was for me. So what kept me on track of that? What did I do? I did an NLP course, okay, because it creates fast change. It's one of the things. Now I need to bring it to the masses because these guys can tell you I do NLP. So sat nav, specific, you need to put an address in. Something else that I'll tell you guys with law of attraction. 
when I set off from my house here to go to this place in Scotland that I've programmed in my sat nav, I'm looking and you know, I can't see Scotland from here. Okay, I can't. I don't know how I'm going to get to Scotland because I can't see all the roads from here. But I know if I keep moving forward, I'll get there. And if I keep that address in the sat nav, if I don't go, do you know what? This is a bit hard. I think I'll instead of Scotland, I might try going to Yorkshire. So I reprogram the sat nav. Now I've already started off in the direction to Scotland. Now I've got to probably veer off and go to Yorkshire. And then I decide, you know what? This is seeming a bit hard as well. You know, it's not as popular as it was, or I don't want to do this. I think I'll go to Scarborough. So now I've put Scarborough in. Now I've made him back. <laughs> I was making progress, now I'm heading back. And then I decide I want to go to Scotland again. So have a focus, stay at it. And even though you can't see where you're going, you know, right, you can drive from anywhere to Scotland, or if you're in another country, you can drive from one side to the other, and you can just keep going, you're going to get there. Okay? When it comes to people with their goals, law of attraction, and attracting stuff, what they do is they keep changing their mind. So they're putting out to the universe the program in the sat nav, I want to go to Scotland, okay, but they're not specific. So the sat nav doesn't really know where to take them anyway. And then they go, well, maybe I want to make 10,000 a month. So law of attraction starts lining up for you, you want to make 10,000. Then it's like, actually, why don't I go for the million? So you go for the million. And then it's like, actually, that seems a bit too much of a leap. And maybe I'll go for like five. And the sat nav's going, okay, well, we started to try and get you a million, but now you want five. And uh, this is what people do. They confuse themselves and the universe and they're leaving more of attraction. That is what you are putting out. We are electrical beings. We put out like a radio frequency. I told you I'd get into the science. And likes attract likes. If you see opera singers and they hit the high note and they shatter the glass, they hit the resonant frequency of the glass where it shatters the glass, okay? That's proof that by vibration, okay, and that's all radio waves are, and electrical signals. You put an electrical signal through a wire or through a human being, guess what, they broadcast it, okay? It goes out, scientifically proven, you can check it, okay? So, um, if you are depressed, what are you putting out there? If you're worried about parking at the supermarket because it's always busy, this time of day, what are you putting out there? If you're worried about that argument you had with your parents that's been going on now for years and years, what are you putting out there? You know, if you're stressed about whatever, whatever stupid shit, I said it, that we get stressed about as humans, and if you actually look from planet Earth, they're all insignificant anyway. If you get into space and look down, the stupid crap that we're worried about can get in the way of the law of attraction, okay? So... This is why, and this is what I'll finish on. There's not many books there, okay? But you might have seen on some other pictures, we, we have what we call the library, we've gone very flash. It's two bookshelves. <laughs> we call it, <laughs> it's a little side room off the kitchen, and we call it the library. It just sounds good, doesn't it? To say we've got a library. Um, but it's full of books, and if I can get on here, they're mostly self development, okay, those sort of things. and if this will play ball and actually work, you'll see I've got a lot of books on here. Now, what happens, Sam, if you don't wash for a week, what happens? Yeah, well, people don't like me so much. Yeah, <laughs> what, what happens to you, Sarah, if you don't like, you know, wash for a couple of days and wear <laughs> perfume and stuff? Oh, it's just a stinky mess, isn't it? So you need to keep doing that daily, don't you? <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same with... Um, same with this kind of stuff, okay? And again, I'll give you a little bit of science. We, we are programmed to look for what's wrong. If I drop you on a desert island, okay, your first thought will be, I need water. Once you've got water, you're, set, you're sorted, right? Because you can drink. You need water more than you need food, actually. You can survive a lot longer without food than you can water. So you find water, you're sorted. No, then you need food. What am I going to eat? So you go and you find some food. Then you think, right, crap, I need shelter because otherwise I'm going to freeze. So you make yourself a shelter to get some shelter. And then you think, okay, right, I've got water, I've got food, I've got a shelter. Actually, I think I want a fire. So you work, you go and find some stuff to build a fire with, you work out how to make fire. Then guess what? You'll start looking like I'm bored of eating these coconuts. What am I going to do? I need to find some more diverse food. I can't just live on coconuts. You know what, I did this, this hut in a bit of a rush, it's not very good, I'm going to make a better one. Do you know what, I'm fed up of going to the, 
river every day to get the water. I'm going to build a water pipe to go from the river to my hut, okay? Do you know what? Actually, maybe this isn't the right side of the island. And this is what we do, guys. It's a survival instinct. We are programmed to, in effect, self-destruct. We're always looking for what's wrong, okay? Now, that's good if you're just on a desert island and you're going to better yourself all the time. But we live in a society now where it's too easy to go and get the bar of chocolate <laughs> because I don't feel full. It's too easy to go and get the bowl of chips. <laughs> it's too easy to get the fries. It's too easy to, you know, do all of these sort of things that lose focus and let us go negative where my car is a year older than the neighbours. That's what's wrong in my life. I need to get the better car. You don't need the better car. It's a load of tosh, okay? Do you know what? I need to spend all this money on new clothes. I live in Cornwall now, and no disrespect to anybody in Cornwall, but it's jeans and a fleece. <laughs> so I will probably never ever wear a suit again. <laughs> you know, and this is what happens, guys. We get caught up looking for what's wrong, and actually it's not wrong, okay? And it detracts us from what we're doing. Again, law of attraction, what am I putting out? I need a new car, my car's crap, <laughs> okay? And you focus on the crap. So sorry, I've spoken for way too long. But that's my take on law of attraction for this stage. Do your self-development, do your daily routine, get your vision board, stay on track, program your sat to get to where you want to be. And just stay on the journey, have faith that you'll get there, even though you can't see everything along the way. Just don't keep changing the direction. <laughs> okay? It's fine to change direction to get around a traffic jam or a herd of what I mean is don't change the final destination. Yeah. Anybody want to finish off? Because I did go on a bit there. <laughs> yeah, I, I can finish off. Um, totally agree. Being specific, you know, exercises like writing out what your perfect day looks like, um, imagining yourself actually living in the house you want to be in, feeling it, as well as doing a vision board and looking at it, actually just feel what it would be like. What would it sound like? What would it smell like? What would it look like? You know, everything. You kind of, as you say, if you immerse yourself in the goal and make it real and feel it, then that is what you're attracting. If you're focusing on the bad stuff, as Paul says, what I don't have, then that's, you know, what, what you think is what you get. So, yeah, and, and the daily routines, the daily rituals and things just keep you on track. I think you, you notice it a lot in life as well with people when, when they focus on negative stuff and how it does affect their lives. I mean, you can, you can meet some people and they can be like, oh, how are you today? And they're like, oh, well, I've got this ache and this pain and, you know, it's always a struggle to get up in the morning. And they, they're so used to saying that. They're, they believe it so much that they have made themselves like that. It's, that's how powerful it is. If you think to yourself, I've got a bad back, I can't get up in the morning, then they're never going to get up in the morning. They're always going to have a bad back because that's what they've programmed their mind to think that that's what they are. You have to really do change the way you think about things. Um, you have to turn everything back into a positive. You have to start looking at the good things, not the bad things. Um, because if you keep going on about negative stuff, you're going to attract it. You keep saying, oh, I'm always broke. I've never got any money. I'm in debt. Because the more you say the word debt, the more debt you're going to get because you're saying debt. Don't say debt. Say, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I've not got the right money at the moment, but money is coming, you know. But don't, don't turn around and say, oh, I'm in debt, I'm skin, I'm broke. Because the more you say words like that, the more you're putting it out there into the universe and the more you're going to get broken skin and in debt. You really do have to really tap into it. And if you haven't seen The Secret or read The Secret, that would be my first thing that I would recommend that you do because it really does give, make you realise the importance of the law of attraction and what, you know, how you can change the way your life is going to pan out just from thinking and changing the way that you think and your mindset. So secret is your first task. So if you haven't seen that or read that, go and read that first because that's going to explain the law of attraction really well to you. Yeah, there's also the Abundance Factor movie, which is read, readily available online free of charge. That's the second one, isn't it, after The Secret. That, again, is very, very powerful about abundance and how you can attract that. Joe Vitale, uh, V-I-T-A-L-E. Um, Joe Vitale, The Attractor Factor. That's very good as well. Breaks it down into simple steps. Uh, because The Secret is brilliant and you need to watch it, but it misses out some things that Joe Vitale fits in for you. Um, um, so yeah, I think we've spoken for long enough on Law of Attraction, guys. There's going to be a part two to this one where we're going to delve a little bit more. And 
I'll just I'll just finish off by the thing with law of attraction. Okay, there are scientific reasons why it works. Okay, and there are the airy fairy reasons why it works. Some people believe it's fairies. Some people believe it's the universe or some religious figure, and some people think it's absolutely scientific. I'll say again, and I think I've said this before on a couple of the trainings I've done. I don't actually know why it works. I just know it does because I'm now in a house in Cornwall, which was on my vision board and where I wanted to be. Okay. And I've worked with fantastic people like Sam and Sarah. So it's actually, it actually does work. And what have you got to lose by giving it a go? A couple of magazines that you can. Yep. Yeah. And, and the other big thing is stop, stop saying this doesn't work. This doesn't work for me. I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> million dollar note. I have this in front of me all the time. Things like that. Little things. Just have little things around you that trigger you to think the right way. It does help. Send me it. Send me that million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Be awesome in your business. Yes. Bye.